it's 10.01. We are, are you going to do that announcement about broadcasting live? Yeah. Yeah, I guess just a few announcements. Um, just your, the general housekeeping, just a reminder and for those of you who might be new. Um, reminder that we're, uh, this is a live broadcast over the web and so everything we're saying is being recorded and broadcast. So we'll try to be on our best behavior. Again, um, Make sure that when you're speaking that you press the button on your microphone so that the red light is shining. We can hear you fine in the room, but if you don't have that microphone on, then the broadcast won't be able to hear you. Uh, we do have Wi-Fi, which is education, go get it. It doesn't require a password. Uh, restrooms are midway down the hall. There's a sign on the, on the ceiling pointing to them. We have vending machines at the front of the building behind the just behind the um, security desk where you came in, there's a room with a kiosk that has uh, chips and drinks there. Um, then I think that's all. Um, we want to start by going around. Generally, start with an introduction, just your name and college. Oh, and one last thing to remind you is that whatever college you're at, just a reminder that this is a statewide um, advisory committee and so everything we're doing today is for the benefit of the state. So go ahead and start on my left here. Good morning, Cindy Griffith. I serve as the Vice President for Instruction with Alvin Community College. Cindy Kasparis, I'm the Vice President of Academic Affairs at Angelina College. Robin Garrett, the Deputy Chancellor of Academic and Student Success at Central Texas College. Dwayne Shaw, I'm Dean of Public Services and Industrial Technologies for Kilgore College. And what I didn't mention before, I'm uh, Dwayne Hiller, a Program Director here at the Coordinating Board and the Academic Quality and Workforce Division. Joyce Williams, Associate Vice Chancellor, Workforce and Community Initiative, Dallas County Community College District. Olga Valerio, El Paso Community College, Dean Advanced Technology Center. Uh, James Chigwin, Tarrant County College, Associate Professor, Computer Science and Department Chair. Leslie Keeling Olson, I'm the Director of Perkins Grants and Criminal Justice Faculty at Temple College. Good morning, Phil Nicotera, Houston Community College, President of Coleman College. Rob Blair, Dean of Technical Education, South Plains College. Good morning, Jennifer Myers, I serve as the Dean over uh, Business and Industry Programs at Odessa College. Good morning, I'm Mindy Nobles. Um, I'm an assistant director here at the Coordinating Board in Academic Quality and Workforce. Um, I'd like to introduce Stephanie Perkins, who has just come to work for us in the last month or so. Uh, I will say uh, candidly that we stole her from Temple College. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Stephanie is uh, managing Perkins grants and will be uh, assisting his staff in all things workforce. So please give welcome to Stephanie Perkins. Sherry Rannis on the staff will probably be down later too. Uh, so many of you know Sherry. Okay. Good morning. I'm Vernon Hawkins, Associate Vice President for Workforce and Continuing Education at Brookhaven College. And I'm the um, immediate past president for uh, TACE. Thank you, colleagues. And for those of you who are joining us online, thank you as well. We will begin with the minutes from our last session. Madam Chair. Yes. Oh, Mary. I Good morning. Thank I was you. Just about to just, <laughs> he was just going to tell me who's online. Yes, Mary, this please. Is Mary. Mary Adams at Texas State Technical College. Also, I wanted to mention I, I'm connected to the live stream, but I don't see any of the video. Okay, we'll check. You don't see, you, you can't see us? No, it's just the, uh, the background screen says waiting for KTTV. Okay, thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Is there, anyone, you. is there anyone else online? Okay. All right, we will continue with uh, the approval of the minutes for, from our July 11th meeting. 
you'd have gotten those. You also have those in your packet. I'm asking for a motion for approval, please. Motion to approve. Ben. A second. They have been moved and seconded that amendments be approved as read. Asking for a vote of aye for those who are approving <laughs> the motion. Aye. Uh, nay for anyone who has any objection of, of approval of the minutes. Okay, minutes are approved as read. Following the agenda that's in front of you, uh, do we have any public testimony or public comments at this time? Seeing none. Okay. Seeing none, then we'll move on to agenda item number four, coordinating board updates regarding programs of study and zip code conversion. Uh, before we start that one, if I could respond to Mary and anyone else uh, who may be watching remotely via a uh, phone or, or computer, if you would refresh your screen, you should be able to see the proceedings. Uh, if you logged in while we were still waiting, you may still have uh, that old image. I am told by the technical wizards in the control room. Mary, would you let us know when that, when uh, you can see us? Did you uh, hear? I did. I refreshed, and no, I still can't see you. I'm going to close the browser and reopen another one, and I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda item four, coordinating board update regarding programs of study and zip code conversion. And thank you, Dr. Reynas, for joining us. Update no video. From, thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Okay, and um, I guess we'll start with the good news. Um, oh, yes. there is no bad news. There is no bad news. There's, well, the, the <laughs> great news. <laughs> So um, Information Technology Program of Study Advisory Committee met yesterday, and as we were asking them if they wanted to appoint subcommittees, they kind of had the attitude of, well, why do we need subcommittees? We can do it all ourselves. So we presented the Cloud Computing Program of Study outline that was recommended by the workshop we had early last June. And after discussing it for a while and looking at it, they said, sure. So <laughs> the pro, uh, cloud computing program of study curricula were approved by the Information Technology Program of Study Advisory Committee. And those will go to the coordinating board in the December, January cycle. And will hopefully, I mean, they'll go out for public comment first and then they'll go to the, uh, to the coordinating board for approval in January. So th that was the first little bit of news. Um, Wait, you got to have us a moment of celebration here. <laughs> yes. I it just hats off to this uh, this team, this 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 team, this advisory committee. Uh, hats off to you. Uh, hats off to James, Robin, Cindy, Cynthia, for leading those workshops and facilitating facilitating those workshops. Hats off to every one of you leaders around the state that did exactly what Dwayne said. You took off your college hat and you put on your state hat and you helped to be able to show that we needed to meet the needs of the businesses within our communities because our, our communities and, and the way we do business is changing, whether it's in small rural areas, whether it's in big metropolitan areas, cloud is where we're going and where we are. And our students need to be able to do that no matter what zip code they live in. They need to be able to do that. And we, we, have, stand, we have stood fast to the mission of community colleges and for the purpose of this committee and the leadership that is around this committee. I thank you. I thank you coordinating board staff for all that you did, but I also thank the faculty in which all of you represent and uh, uh, push through. Mary, hats off to you at TSTC that helped lead the way 
uh, with all of your faculty there that have also been pushing this uh, a year ahead of all of us. So I just uh, thank you so much, Dwayne. That was great news. Okay, and also, well, I was also going to extend a thanks to Robin Garrett who stepped in at the last minute as I was, as we were getting the advisory committee convened, and I remember we needed somebody from the Welcome to serve on that committee, and I was frantically calling people, and Robin graciously agreed to serve on that subcommittee, and I think she was also really helpful in getting that helping them to understand the process we went through to get that cloud computing curriculum developed. And I think she was really helpful in getting that pushed through. So that's the leadership we got. Th thank you, Dwayne. Um, I, want, I want to thank this committee, though. I think one of the pivotal points yesterday in that meeting was the fact that this committee had already approved the four new courses and the, cha the cloudifying of the existing courses. Once they saw that we had done that, it eased their mind on some of the, the way the, the courses were aligned in the curriculum. So that move by this committee was very important to the success of yesterday. Now, now that was great news. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Could, could I ask for uh, some acknowledgement of Sherry Rannis, who uh, worked with Joyce to put the June workshop together where we hammered out where participants hammered out uh, the five curricula that were approved yesterday. So I'd just like to give Sherry Radis acknowledgement and thanks for Oh, that. you know what? That was coming later, but mm -hmm. uh, they're hands down, not only acknowledging her, but the organization that she put together for this last, the last workshop and being able to do the cloud mapping of the curriculum and helping Dwayne with the data and putting the analysis together, we could not have done it without Sherry. And also like to say thanks to Sherry because I was really uh, neck deep in work at that time and without her help, I'm not sure we would have gotten it done, but I really appreciate her stepping up and helping with that. Okay. Um, I guess moving on, the other update we wanted to mention was the SIP code conversion, the SIP 2020. Um, I have a couple of, actually they're at the end of the pack, at the bottom of the packet I sent out, there's a handout uh, showing a list of SIP code changes and new SIP codes that were written. Um, this is just kind of an information for information at this point at some time, and I think we might even have to write some kind of protocol, mm -hmm. although this only happens once every 10 years. Uh, whenever we have this kind of change, we need to look through the WECM to see if there are any courses that fall under any of these SIP codes that have changed, or especially any of the new SIP codes mm -hmm. that until now we had just put them in the closest SIP code we could find, but now it has in, in many cases, there are new SIP codes that we can use for you know, more specific um, topics. A question on that, Duane. Will this have any impact on funding? In most of the changes I've seen, it's uh, moving from one six-digit SIP in the same two-digit SIP code to another six-digit SIP in the same two-digit SIP code and most of the funding is at the two-digit SIP level. So in most cases, there will be no impact on level of funding. Okay. Any other questions by any other members on the committee that maybe you can think of now? I'm sure you have some later, but in going through looking at those, the uh, major concern was to make sure that there was do no harm to uh, funding, existing funding. Now, of course, we would love for increase of funding. Of course. <laughs> That's a much higher level of <laughs> approval than I can give. Um, uh, that's all I have, unless you have any questions, if anybody has any questions about coordinating board. Um. I, I Dwayne, I do. This is Mary. On the SIP codes, is this going to be, I don't know the process uh, for updating them, is this something that we're going to 
need to uh, act on individually, or is it uh, KTCB that will be updating them? So at, um, as far as the program inventory goes, a coordinating board will be looking at the, especially the zip codes that are being deleted or moved, and we will make those changes internally. Um, in, like from my experience from the previous change, is that if a new zip code was written, it really comes down to whether the college wants to use that new zip code or continue using the existing zip code. Um, in many cases, their um, student, what do you call that, student management service right. program is difficult to make changes to. And there's also the danger of losing historical data if you change the zip code. So we really leave it up to the institution to decide whether to change to the new zip code or leave it where it is for, for those reasons. As far as the Wacom courses, um, especially if a, and, and again, looking at the table, um, I didn't print out the table of deleted because there are actually only three zip codes aside from SIP 60, and SIP 60 is like the medical internship or medical residency programs. So I took all of those off of these lists. But of all of the programs that were being deleted, there were only three listed, and none of them are SIP codes we use in the Wacom or on the program inventory. But um, as far as changing the Wacom courses, that's something we would either need to do as an advisory committee or create a subcommittee to look into those and you know, again, see what changes need to be made in the Wacom inventory. Thank you. So be before, as we move forward, uh, what is the wish of this committee? Would we like to look at it as a committee as a whole or form a subcommittee to look at whether or not we would um, make those changes, those zip code changes, um, for the courses that are listed in the weapon. What is your wish? Any recommendations? Okay. So hearing no, no recommendations of whether or not we would uh, form a subcommittee, then I would probably say then, Dwayne, what we would probably do then is look at these as a, as a whole committee to convert these from to the <clears throat> new SIPs or to look at to see if there's any impact on current and existing SIPs. Like you, Duane, I went through the initial SIP conversion change 10 years ago in developing a crosswalk so colleges could see what changes went from here to there and what changed. And um, I'm, I'm excited about the fact that we can now be more specific with our SIP codes and our courses, which will help us align better when we're looking at um, SOC codes for grants and opportunities that way to be able to align those. Um, it's, a, it's an automatic change on degree plans and all of those things to the coordinating board efforts in which they've done. You guys have done a great job of being able to put this together and and so we'll see as we go, go forward. Can I ask a question yeah. real quick? Sure. A uh, question Could on line 18 on these zip code changes. Thanks. When it is means, your mic on? Oh, yeah, I think it's on. Yeah. Okay. It says other. Does other mean, doesn't oh. fall in any other categories? Is that yeah. what other means? In, in other, um, in most cases, if a zip code ends in 99, oh. Um, See, on line 18, it says other for right. CF zip title. So I and I think it's because it. the alignment is down, but the line above that, is veterinary animal health technologies technicians oh, okay. comma so that's from other. 17 okay I, so I, that it's just not lined up right okay. but okay. yeah any zip code that ends in 99 is basically the four digit zip code with the word other added to it and just as a word of you know we don't use zip codes ending in 99 in on our course or program inventories okay. so if anything we will put it under the most uh, gen most general zip code rather than the other so oh, code. Okay, thank you. Thanks for asking. And I just wanted to throw out, again, I didn't, you know, we don't work in a vacuum, and I also want to acknowledge uh, Sherry Rainus in at least prodding me along to recognizing that the zip codes were changing and her help in getting this done. And I probably would still be in a fog if, if she hadn't kind of nudged me in that direction. 
Okay. Um, with that, since we are uh, on coordinating board updates, I am sure that um, my colleagues around this dais, as well as colleagues around the state, uh, would think that we would be remiss as a, as a leadership committee of leaders around the, col around the state for community colleges if we did not acknowledge the loss of one of our great supporters of community colleges that have been with the state of Texas for a long time, and that's Dr. Rex Peoples. And we have lost a, uh, a great advocate and a dear friend. And um, having the opportunity to work with Rex for a number of years, I know the impact that he has had on the state, not only for community colleges, but also for universities. I also know his commitment to uh, workforce education, career and technical education, dual credit, uh, to a number of things that would change student lives. And I'm sure that I join my colleagues around this dais that we will miss him sincerely and um, know how honored we were to know him and to serve with him and to serve beside him on championing those things with the state legislators, with all other government officials and also university partners um, when it came to career and technical education. So to the coordinating board family and to Rex's family, we just, from us, we want to say thank you for all the services that uh, you all stood beside him and helped him lead. But um, from my heart, I want to say thank you um, for allowing us to be able to have this moment to express those condolences. So anyone else, uh, of course, you're welcome to make comments, public comments. Yeah, thanks, Joyce, and you know, the staff. We're still kind of in shock over the, the events and what happens, uh, what where we go from here. And I think our guiding principle either is or should be, "What would Rex do?" Whenever we're faced with any kind of decisions, so we really, you know, lost a great mentor, but he's led us through through the years, and. Sorry. Yeah, and we're just really grateful for the, for the time we had with him and the contributions he has made. Okay. I also want to mention uh, that the AWS Educate uh, had, uh, along with Secretary Ruth Hughes on this past Wednesday, made a statewide announcement in Dallas about the initiative and the partnership of 22 colleges, community colleges in Texas, about cloud computing. And I was excited to hear the Vice President of Global Initiatives for AWS Educate, Ken Eisner, in his speech, he recognized Rex and his role in cloud computing and the support uh, that the coordinating board had given. But also in his speech, he publicly named uh, his team, Mindy Nobles, Sherry Rainus, and Dwayne Hiller. And I was so proud that he did that by name. Uh, to everyone that was in that room. And even more so, I saw the smile in the, in the chest of, the, of Dr. Paredes, Commissioner for Higher Education Coordinating Board, chest just poke out when he said and called those names. And afterwards, the commissioner came up to me and thanked me 
for recognizing uh, Rex because I had the opportunity to thank AWS Educate for that recognition and, uh, and quote Rex by saying he would have just said, this makes sense. This makes sense. And um, so I, I just want to say that your, as you said, your, your what would Rex do has not gone unnoticed. And again, your commissioner was there to hear the names called and all the work that you all have done on getting a statewide purpose of what community colleges are to represent with business partners done. And so um, I just wanted to say thank you, but I wanted to also let you know that on your commissioner's almost final day, but as he said, his last official act, that he had an opportunity to hear what his team has done and have a statewide impact. And he made that as he made that very publicly known. <clears throat> so moving on from uh, before we Go move ahead. on, sorry, uh, let us not uh, leave this moment without acknowledging uh, Dr. Joyce Williams' initiative in uh, moving forward the entire cloud computing uh, curriculum development. Uh, process. Uh, you got the right people in touch, Joyce. Uh, you shepherded this initiative through um, the state's uh, higher education bureaucracy, as it were, uh, to bring this to fruition. Uh, you know, it takes this sort of initiative from people in the field on behalf of the students and on behalf of the mission uh, to get the work done sometimes and here the work got done the outcomes going to benefit innumerable students in this state and uh, everybody but Joyce has gotten acknowledgement I, I want her to receive full credit and thanks so thank you Joyce um, it's thank you I, I appreciate that and um, yeah <laughs> thank you uh, moving on to number five. Actually, I was um, oh. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, I was going to do uh, one more kind of update. Um, part of our, um, at the coordinating board, uh, one of our, I guess, renewed missions, you might say, is to be more, uh, to have more communications with the field. And I have an example of uh, email or a letter through government delivery that was sent out um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, for workforce education course manual course reviews. Uh, this is uh, similar to the letter that generally goes out in, in the spring, mm -hmm. uh, prompting or hoping to prompt colleges to submit welcome comments for, for the advisory committee to review. Uh, our plan is to send these out more frequently during the year, at least quarterly, yeah. and to also have an email reminder from me in, on behalf of this committee to remind faculty and staff and administrators at the colleges to that welcome comments can be sent in at any time and how we rely on those to determine which courses need to be renewed, changed, added. So this is the this is the communication that went out a couple of weeks ago for that purpose. Well I think that's exciting because we do need to have the feel to send in more th triggers um, for welcome changes that will be able to get to this committee because we've had concerns that we have not been getting enough, yet we know that there are people out there that don't know what to do, how to get that information, that are still, believe it or not, after three years are still saying, when is the workshop? When is the workshop? And uh, so being able to, to have this go out more frequently gives them an opportunity to remember that they have a voice and it is their voice in this process that actually changes the courses in the welcome. Not someone who's sitting behind a desk that says this thing should change. It is their voice that triggers these changes and that they hear from businesses. Yes, Father. 
Um, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, yesterday, one of the members of the Program of Study Committee was, was um, reiterating the urgency for the Cisco, upcoming Cisco changes. And I recommended to him to submit a welcome comment, and he immediately did. So that's one of the things that as we go through the rest of our agenda and we talk about some of the uh, triggers and workshops, we need to take that into consideration and, and figure out a way to review those comments regularly. I agree. Thank you, Robin. That's what I just mentioned to Duane. I knew that was coming. Thanks. <laughs> uh, the, our, our plan is to send out a quarterly reminder to submit comments uh, about a month before uh, each WECA meeting. So we'll continue to get this message out as we move forward. Okay, now can I go to number five? I see, <laughs> seeing no objections. <laughs> so we'll have professional organization updates. Taste, Tacti, and Tacro at this point. Uh, we have Vernon that's representing Taste and I, I know we don't have the TACTI representative, but we have the next best thing, which is the current sitting president of the association. So she can also give us an update if she would. So why don't we start with you, Mr. Hawkins? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to sound re repetitive, but uh, my, my part of my uh, update is the same thing I said with a few uh, last time about, about the spring conference. You know, it's what taste one of the big things that we, you know, probably 50% to 70% of what we do is is development of, of our staffs around the state. And so the conference is a big major uh, uh, emphasis for us. So this year, as a matter of fact, it's the 40th anniversary of TASE. And so this is a big celebration we're going to have in April. Uh, the theme is 40 years of continuing, continuing excellence, 40 years of continuing excellence, excellence will be at the uh, Austin Omni South Park. Uh, this year, for those who have come and have sent uh, people from your institutions, uh, we, we've, for a number of years, we've been, uh, the conference has been Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This year, we're going back to the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule. So I believe last, uh, the last time we met, I gave the dates as 14 through 16, but it's actually 15 through 17th of April, April 15th through 17th. Uh, and I think the interesting thing about the conference this year is, is uh, we've been talking about major themes and we're, we're uh, in a few uh, days, we'll be open, opening up for uh, um, constituents to send in uh, breakout session ideas. But interesting, what, what people have called in already and asked if th that they want to do, it seems this, that this year may be a lot more of um, taste and the breakout sessions will be more, I think, uh, for lack of a better term, a social bent. Uh, things that are that are coming in are, in fact, one of the, the speakers that, that we have who, uh, if schedule permitting, is going to talk about community college uh, as a catalyst uh, to uh, affect poverty in, in, in a community and uh, dealing with homeless and the lack of jobs and economic development. Uh, how continuing education or non-credit programs can work uh, across the state in order to alleviate uh, uh, these particular areas. Uh, and I think that's something, I won't say new, but, but definitely to have that as a major theme is, is a little bit different for us. Uh, of course, uh, again, we, we have a number of people that uh, want to do presentations as, and, and we welcome them on fostering uh, leadership for those, uh, those um, staff who want to go into the non-credit area, uh, the, the, the continuing education and workforce development area. Of course, always we're, we're looking for best practices in ABE, and I think some of the, uh, the major term, uh, theme that we're seeing coming across from some of the comments are uh, non-credit to credit pathways and articulation agreements. So I think this is going to be a very, very uh, interesting uh, conference with a number of interesting breakout sessions. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to be working on that, and uh, you know, as uh, this, this, I think that the the major schedule will be done in the next month or so for the April conference. So we're a little, a little ahead of schedule. I'm glad this year. Uh, so that's the first one. Number number two, uh, it's kind of an update. Is that we're st we're uh, working on the local need and special topic course review. Uh, 
and we've committed, uh, uh, it's almost like herding cats sometimes. We uh, have committed to a November 1st deadline to get those uh, done and back uh, to this committee. So I just wanted to let you know we haven't forgotten you. I think that uh, uh, we, I still have some work to do with Dwayne on, on that issue, but we have committed the group, and this is the Board of Taste, that we would review all local needs and special topics uh, by November 1. So uh, we have that commitment. Uh, the, uh, one of the things, and y y everyone mentioned Rex, but I, I still remember one of the last times I, I talked to him, and one of the things w was at the conference last year, and he, he and I and Jacob Fair from TACT uh, had a conversation, and Jacob was saying he wanted better data about um, uh, training that was leading to jobs, and we can get it from the credit side, but you know it's really kind of hard to get it from the non-credit side, and, and, and how are institutions doing that? And I, and I remember Rex, of course, turned to Dwayne and said, well, we can pull that, we can get that. So, and, and I had that on my, my list, you know, it's funny how things work, that, that, that the, the group at our last meeting three weeks ago said, we need to start getting back on that topic. And, you know, and so I had that on my list to kind of reach out and, and ask, you know, what can we do? And, and then all of a sudden we got news this week. But that is, you know, the third thing I wanted to mention is the fact that we are working on uh, best practice, I guess I'd say, how do we collect the data from around the state on those certificate programs that may not be credit based? Because I don't think that any of us are doing a really, really good job about about doing that uh, from the from our uh, from our institutional perspective. So uh, that is something that that uh, that the board of taste is, is really going to going to try to get a handle on this year and uh, work on is one of the the major emphasis. Okay. And I think that's all I have on that for now. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hawkins. Kessler. CACTI is in the middle of a website redesign, and with that website redesign, we also are adding some additional resources to help both this committee and then Perkins people. So within it will be a Perkins tab with a Wickham uh, reference link to. So ultimately the question becomes, what can we post for you? Do you want, you know, I know some of it gets posted, but then some of it has a more arduous process for the coordinating board than what we have. And so as we're developing that, we will be coming to you saying, do you, do you want these minutes? Do you want this agenda posted and, and things like that? Um, we hope that it's gonna be done within the next three to six weeks. Um, we'll also have all of our past information, past conference information, past resources, past volumes of Perkins updates um, so that as things are shifting to a new generation that's coming in, they can go back and find some of that archived data to look at and see how things have transpired and things have processed it. So that also includes, um, as we're doing the website redesign, it also includes some information from, or uh, some information for y'all to hopefully consider and give back to us on how can we help when it comes to our conference and Wickham. Um, after our last meeting, there was a couple conversations that maybe we needed to do a Wickham 101 because a large portion of the CTE faculty had lost that knowledge base or were new, especially new to department chairs. There had also been discussion of possibly maybe we needed to host a, uh, a, you know, identify which one needed a workshop and host a wo workshop in the middle of the conference because that would drive faculty members to the conference but also uh, help and alleviate, you know, what might be a burden of a workshop on this committee. So we are still open to that conversation. We're still open to that discussion. Um, I'm gonna point out Dwayne here. Dwayne is uh, one of the conference co-chairs this year. And so we have different sections open within our conference planning to, to basically wait and see and what's gonna be best and what will be the need as, the, as we get closer to doing a final agenda. Our conference is the first week of April. Well, I'm excited about that opportunity to be able to have a space that we can actually host a a welcome workshop, um, especially for some of the things that I know that's gonna come from Olga and, and Rob and Robin later on as we discuss the need to be able to have some, some of these triggers answered immediately like the Cisco one uh, and to be able to have that opportunity to do that. 
uh, and and have the space where it's then not on the coordinating board or a burden on the coordinating board uh, for <coughs> space. Um, you notice I just said only for space. <laughs> uh, but I'm excited about the opportunity to have that. And I will tell you that we will probably a little, be a little bit cautious about uh, posting the coordinating board minutes on a different website other than the coordinating board. But surely announcements like Welcome Workshop is coming, um, you know, put in your minutes on the welcome, I mean, your comments on the welcome comments and different announcements like that that may be coming, that surely people will then be familiar more with the TACTI web uh, website or and can go there and find those same announcements that may be only be going to the uh, CTC liaisons, but now could be open to everyone. So that's definitely a great thank you, Hackney, for wanting to be able to do that. Uh, any comments from coordinating board staff on yeah. taking them up on the weapon workshop? Thanks. Also, I guess want to maybe suggest um, it might also be good to have some kind of forum where uh, staff, uh, faculty, and administrators from community colleges can ask questions. Uh, currently, we have the welcome comments, and it's kind of a structured what specific course changes do you see coming up. But we don't really have any kind of forum where they can ask, how do I find a certain course, or how do I, you know, basically like your Wacom 101, how do I use the Wacom? But it might even be more, um, more generic or more specific questions. So maybe some kind of forum and maybe a FAQ page that would kind of help, you know, if you have a question, just go to this page, someone has asked it before, and here's the answer. So I, I can see a, a really useful, um, other uses for this page also. And you can put your your presentation up on the page. Right, and right when she said Welcome 101, I said, yeah, we have two presentations. Um, when they re, um, I guess, upgraded our website, we lost one of them, right. or we lost the link to one of them. Mm -hmm. So things like this um, might be useful to have on, an, on another site also to mm -hmm. kind of as a backup or as a alternate. 101 so. and 102. What's 201. Yeah. 201. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know what the numbering is. But, but it's two presentations. Yeah. All right. We, we were um, potentially looking at, um, at the conference as a uh, maybe even a secondary pre-conference for not just Welcome 101, but the information that that came out on that sheet, on that handout that uh, that you were just looking at earlier, um, because yes, we have new people who have little or, or no information about how to deal with it, but we also have those folks that are still calling you asking when is the next uh, workshop going to be right. uh, that we could update with this. So so we really did think at the the TACTI board uh, w w really thought that it would be uh, extremely helpful to to a lot of administrators across the state uh, for even, so it's gonna go I think a little further than just a 101. Uh, a 101 is necessary, but we also need to do just a general update for a lot of folks. I agree. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, while we're in between, um, just had one more uh, housekeeping that I forgot to mention earlier. So if you have the envelope with your lunch money, uh, could you go ahead and pass that down to the, I guess to the far end? of the table and Valerie will come pick those up, I guess. At, to, toward that end, yeah. At, to, no, no, just to the end of the. Oh, she, <laughs> oh, and um, as she said, or if anyone asked, um, if you need change, just write the amount you put in the envelope and she'll bring change back to you. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, item number six on our agenda, report from special topics and local need course review subcommittees. Uh, we got several uh, committees that are kind of working in conjunction on some of this. If you read your minutes, we got a, a several people volunteered to be part of some subcommittees. Vernon has already given us an update on the CE. Uh, so we have Rob who was working on some other things on special topics in this, this summer. Robin, of course, is basically leading the whole welcome protocol manual, which then 
kind of involves uh, special topics and and uh, reviewing of local needs. So it's so we're trying to make sure that there's a balance. And then you have Olga, who volunteered to also look at special topics, local need. We've got Cindy Griffith that also looked at course revisions and archival subcommittee. So I'm just going to ask all of you all to participate in this dialogue, and we'll just allow. Uh, either Rob or Robin to kind of kick it off. And if I may, um, I know you didn't say me, I could, but. Um, so, Dwayne, is this inserting <laughs> the coordinating board thing? Please right. go ahead, Dwayne. I just wanted to. Um, I was going to defer to him anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, let you know, and what um, Vernon was too polite to say is I've finally gotten around to uh, sending out <laughs> these um, lists of courses, and this afternoon I'll send the actual courses to Olga and Vernon um, on the, these are the 20, I'm sorry, 2017, 2018 uh, courses. Uh, and again, this is just a list of the courses. Uh, you'll get the actual courses um, later this afternoon. And the idea is that as you review these courses and look at the descriptions, the question is, are, are there currently Wacom courses that they could use instead? Do the current Wacom courses, maybe they have a different uh, contact hour range that doesn't allow, you know, if we expanded the contact hour range, maybe they could use that course instead of writing a local need course. Um, other, you know, questions will be, is it a valid workforce course? If not, we need to let the college know that they need to either emphasize the workforce nature of the course or not report it for funding. Um, so this is kind of the worksheet that they'll be working on. Uh, the other option, if you see several courses that you know, might be at the same topic from different colleges, then that might be a trigger for uh, either course review or to add new courses. Or I think the committee before has gone ahead and just combined all of those local need courses into one course and edit it to the Wacom, again, with the advisory committee's approval. Uh, Dwayne, just as a perusal through some of these, I see that there's a lot of, well, several, I wouldn't say a lot because these are hundreds, so I won't say a lot. But there are several courses being submitted as two credit hour courses that currently already exist in the Wacom as three and four credit hour. And I know at one point in time, historically, and I'm only talking historically, we had gone through and had the field come in and look at those two credit hour courses, and most of the two credit hour courses were deleted from the Wacom. I do see a number of courses that have been submitted, especially as local need courses, that currently already exist as three credit hours. And so, it feels like they are wanting to just use a two credit hour version of an existing three credit hour version. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how that's triggered, well, the way, whether when they give those comments, is it because of industry saying, hey, we now are industry standards or accreditation changes that have now reduced those hours, or did the college just has a preference of, of teaching a two hour because the three hour doesn't work for them, but other people in the state are teaching the three out. So I, I want to know Robin and um, Dwayne and I, and I say that that because I don't know if there was, a, is there a protocol? You guys know the protocol off the top of your head. And whether there was a protocol written to address that and how we would address that as new people around are reading this and also an opportunity for those who are listening to us who may have submitted local needs for two credit hours when a three credit hour already exists. And normally you're looking to me historically and and I'm thumbing back through our new protocols right now as I as as I speak but historically we have only allowed um, a, a one two two three or three four never um, allowing to have a, a two three and four in the as, a, as an option. And let me see if, um, like I said, I'm fumbling through to see if we took that out of the current protocols or not. Let me keep looking. Y'all talk. And one, one th 
thing we have done in the past is we, in those cases we will look at the four hour course and again with the reduction to 60 semester credit hours for AES degrees a lot of colleges then instead of using the four hour they will use a three hour course so we look at the frequency data to see is the four hour course still being used and if not then we can archive the four hour version and then create the two hour version so it'll be a two three instead of a three four Okay. So that's one one option. I just wanted to make sure that that was um, clear as you all start to look at the list of special topics and local needs and why they were submitting those courses. So that it's not just based on faculty preference of a course uh, that they want to teach it as a two hour, that it is truly based on either it's you know 60 hours or the content has now been limited or requirement based on accreditation uh, or some sort of that uh, that has a real significant meaning yeah and just another little additional on that um, on the actual course form where it has a description there's also a section for justification and that's where the college would include that information whether it's the advisory committee recommended it or if it's, it's a new industry standard or if it's uh, licensing or certification requirement. So those will be on the actual course printouts when, when you get those. Okay, I found the protocol. <laughs> <laughs> In an effort to maintain instructional integrity, semester credit hour ranges are limited to two consecutive credit hours. Example, one, two, two, three, three, four, or four, five. However, it is acceptable to have only one option. Example, only a three semester credit hour option. Semester credit hour courses are assigned contact hour ranges based on the ratios found in the GIPWI document titled Lecture Lab Credit Hour Combinations. So I, I agree with, with Duane. We need to look at those to see if there's, an, if there's a way to eliminate the four. But if there isn't, if we still have a lot of colleges teaching a two, a three, and a four, you know, that, that, that opens us up for quite a different course as far as contact hour ranges. So that's something that this is, this group would have to consider how we handle those. Okay. But even even the fact that they're submitting it as a special topic or a local need with a two, if there's a three, four already in the Wacom, is still is it still the same course? That, that's a question that we need to, to think about. Okay. I just wanted to bring it up as I kind of peruse through this. Uh, I saw several of those yes. being submitted. Several. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. And I guess just another note when you look at the total of. Especially. I'm sorry, as another note, when you look at the total, uh, it comes to 436, mm -hmm. but you might see throughout. Um, some of these were submitted more than once during the year and there will be duplicate copies. So some, in some cases you'll be able to combine uh, groups of similar courses or the same course submitted by the same institution. So it might reduce the number, it should reduce the number considerably. Just things like that. Okay. So Rob, Robin, you all want to kind of just, I guess, uh, and sure, I'll, I'll start it off. Okay, so I'm going to reference this blue sheet that everyone should have. And if there's some extra copies, or I have some copies here if someone didn't, didn't get this sheet. <coughs> okay, so w Wickham comments. Um, so so the, the spreadsheet, as we went through the Wickham comments sub subcommittee, as the spreadsheet was turned in in July, is provided in, Ju in July, and there were some questions about and from July meeting is how do Wickham comments trigger a Wickham workshop, workshop course additions, revisions, archival, that sort of thing. So, so I'm going to go through very briefly uh, what the results were from the Wickham comments spreadsheet that was submitted in July. There were 48 comments were noted with 12 action recommendations. That's how I termed them: action, something to do with, you know. So. So those first three bullets are recommendations of a Wickham workshop. There were seven that the subcommittee came up with. Uh, new college, new courses recommended, there were three. 
and the and the other was some some information that was that was us that the coordinating board Dwayne needed to, to provide to a college because they had some questions why some courses were archived, and then a, and the creation of the HIWT 2330 and 2340 course, which in my mind was a pilot. You tell me if in history if there was something like that, but we we initiated a pilot uh, of developing a new course that I'll go over in just a moment. So those remaining 36 consisted of those following bullets. That's how that's how they were they were categorized, and uh, a recommendation of a, of local needs, special topics, and just further review, and then additional information, uh, accreditation standard notices that that two of them that were provided does not meet Wickham course guidelines. Uh, no action required, recommendation of SIP rubric that looks like it's going to be handled through, through the new, new SIP web, new SIP 2020, uh, con and continuation of, of above comment that was comment that was part of another of a submission. So the rest of this following the second half of that page is just my perspective as, as I went through this process and, and just some ideas that I'm throwing out there, some suggestions, something to consider. So as, as I developed this process, thought about this process, then I started with a spreadsheet and then of course I, I went to South Plains College IS to try to figure out you know, if there's a better way to do that. I was probably further along in the, in the process to, to change so, so I kept with the spreadsheet and I uh, categorized those spreadsheets, formulated some drop-down boxes, sent them out to the subcommittee. We reviewed them individually, put some notes in it, sent it back. I compiled that evidence, compiled those results, and that's that top, 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 top paragraph that I just talked about. But as I went through this process, uh, I began to realize, I'm, and to my knowledge, there was only one thing that happened with all that, all that information at this point in time. Well, the cloud. There was one. Rec there was one comment about cloud computing, uh, but but outside of that, the the course creation of the HIWT course. Uh, that's what I know at this point in time, to my knowledge, that anything came of all of these 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 comments. So so as I thought about this process, I, I thought, well, uh, this Wickham comment template uh, that and this. This, this from, from Dr. Peebles threw a wrench into my, into my presentation today, today, but you know, things can always be improved. So this was just, this was just ideas. So as uh, I thought about this Wickham comment template and results spreadsheet, I thought, well, could that be revised and used as an instrument to distribute Wickham comments to various subcommittees uh, through recommendations to a through Wickham comment recommendations to, a, to the appropriate subcommittees that were, again, developed, that are in the Pro Wickham Protocol Manual that were developed with co-chairs last July. So I thought, well, that, could that be the, the instrument that distributes all these different types of, of comments or recommendations from the comments to the right parties instead of just being in one solid list for everyone to look at? So that's been my thought. So I, I went back and I, and I took these comments that we originally started with, you know, the regular comments that we originally started with, and I recategorized those to those bullets that are following on this second. So I said that if process applied to previous 48 Wickham comments, the estimated results would have been the following. And so I'm looking at those first five bullets, and the first four are the subcommittees that were developed last July. And then the, and the fifth one is, is a recommendation of Wickham workshops that would come to this, directly to this committee, is what I'm thinking. If, you know, this could always all be revised, just an idea, just a suggestion. So, the, so, the, the, so there was, out of the 48, that's how many recommendations. It would have gone from 10 recommendations from that further review to 18 to the, to the course revision and archive subcommittee, seven to credit special topics, uh, four to non-credit, uh, no, none to the professional development, 
which, which those last two are under one co-chair, and then s and seven of the Wickham workshop recommendations. And then those last three bullets would have been one course recommendation, which, which was processed, and, and no action required, which I will combine some of those, which would have been six, and then, and then uh, additional information needed from submitter. They just didn't provide enough information to do anything with. You know, it was just, I don't want to use the term vent, but it, it was just talk, you know? Uh, not, not thorough, not concise, not clear, just, just talk. Okay, so so I have a, I do have a question to consider based on that process, and and I so electronic process or manual. So I got to thinking. Well, could this Wickham comment could it be automated to route comments to appropriate subcommittees? And maybe this is a future question. Could it be? And Wayne's the guru of all those systems, but could it be revised to where? as a person filled out these comments and they, and they chose the appropriate boxes, then it would go to these, automatically go to these different committees instead of a Wickham comment subcommittee evaluating them and distributing them out. That's, that's my question, just a, just a thought. On that back page, uh, and I'm gonna go back to the nor new course recommendation on that back page is, is that HI double, the HIWT 2330 course that was, that was uh, created. And in this scenario, the number of participating colleges included were 12. So originally it was six, but the final report I got that 12 colleges, this, this creation of this course from a local needs course to a Wickham course was gonna affect 12 colleges. Well, that's pretty substantial in my mind. So the question is, uh, in my mind is, what is a participating college number in order to trigger a, a new course? You know, how, how many colleges does a uh, recommendation of a new course need to affect before it's taken seriously? So the new course recommendation process, as, as Joyce and I and, and Dwayne, as we, as we took, when this course came up, so I just kind of bulleted one through six. There are three terms to be revised as needed. And you see those, you see that process. And to my knowledge, Wayne, that's, that's how that course happened to my, my knowledge, okay? So I was just, I was just, as I was thinking through those processes when we came up with this pilot, and I'm calling it a pilot because I don't know if it existed before. So there's the six, six criteria or, or six, yeah, criteria that that process followed. Okay, so that, that's where it stands is now, to be revised as needed, however, if, if the pilot is to continue. But I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. Joyce, Joyce initiated that, but I thought it was pretty good, and it certainly affected enough colleges to carry through with. So at least, at least something happened with that, out of all of this. You know, there was a good action item and something happened with it. All right, so, so I'm gonna move on to these. Wick the other question was Wickham workshop triggers. So those previous seven recommendations out of, out of the 48 that we talked, comments that we talked about, then that's, they're, they're listed there. And that was the previous, seven previous recommendations. So a as results to, to to trigger the triggers and questions is, is again not number yeah, number of colleges affected to trigger a workshop, and, and the reason that I say that is on number. It's the horology. Where is that at? That's number three. So that number three, jewelry to jewelry arts, uh, outdated SIP, uh, horology, uh, proposed college teaching all local needs courses. So. The person that submitted this, I think it is from Alvin Community College, ACC, either Alvin or Austin, I guess, one of the two, is I think it's Alvin, that... I think Austin, Austin has the jewelry. Was it Austin? Okay, all right, so, all right, so, so Austin Community College and I think Paris Junior College, the person from ACC that submitted this talked about there's only one, uh, there's only two jewelry programs in the state of Texas, is what I understood. Mm -hmm. So, well, is that enough to have, is that enough colleges to have a Wickham workshop? 
to me, I think those two colleges get together and, mm -hmm. and work it out. That is know? a model. Yeah. You're right. We yeah. do that. So, so that's the reason I asked that question, how many colleges are needed, you know, or are affected in order to, uh, to, to initiate a trigger. So out of those, so the, back to the question, what triggers a Wickham workshop? So out of those seven, the first two, the one in, no, I'm sorry, the one in three is, is what I, I categorized out of those seven. So out of those seven, um, either emergency industries were uh, needed in Wickham inventory, some kind of new innovative program is needed, or number three, modernizing, I use that term moder modernizing technology, and I'll just simply slang it as course descriptions and outcomes no longer current with, with industry, needed to be updated. Now out of those seven, it's my perspective that those two criteria were used to identify workshop trigger. Now, there were some accreditation requirements. Uh, one was, I think, surge tech, and one was criminal justice, but didn't, but neither one of those were used to initiate a, a work and workshop based on committee. I, I know that law enforcement, you know, one of them was law enforcement, that's academy, and it's not, it's not, a workshop is not needed uh, based on the new criteria with, with, uh, with a TICO. So, but, but you know, but that's just me. I just, I knew that and that's just me. So, so there's gotta be some thought. So maybe the automation process doesn't work because it's gotta have some thought, some thought to go along with some of these. So, so anyway, so I left that four, five, six, seven, eight blank because I'm not sure at this point in time what what else would trigger a Wickham workshop? I know there's some good ideas probably floating around in this room at this point in time that could fill in those blanks, but, yep. Protocol 30301 lists 10 triggers of Wickham workshops. We've already established the triggers okay. of Wickham workshops. So in Protocol 0301, which we voted on in, uh, in May to finalize, there are 10 triggers of it. It's a matter of how we handle the triggers once they've been triggered. <laughs> okay, all right, good enough. Well, then, then that's why well, all that's blank then, right? Okay, so uh, uh, one thing that um, Mindy stated in the July meeting was, was that uh, that Wickham comments were open to everyone, and, and, I, and, and Mindy stated that she, she was in favor of, of, of institutions signing off and approving. And, and I guess the reason that I'll say that is because a, a lot of the comments that we received, you know, the, uh, and, well, let me back up. I, I don't want to say it that way. Let me back up and just say what I wrote here. <laughs> I do agree with many uh, regarding having institutions sign off on comments in order to ensure institutions provide clear, concise, and thorough inst information. I think, that, I think that's important as reading through and trying to to understand and comprehend what was written. I th do think it needs to be clear and concise. Some of them were very good, some of them weren't as good. And, 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 and so my thought was that as, as dean, uh, yes, I would, I would, I would, if something was coming from South Plains College, I would be sure that it was clear and concise and thorough. I, I, I didn't receive this to my knowledge, so I know that there's a lot of folks out there also that aren't receiving this. So coming into the colleges, I think it needs to be, you know, um, more generic or, or more widespread coming into the colleges, just my perspective. But coming back from the colleges, I think it needs to be narrow so that, so that information is clear, concise, and thorough. And I'm just going to say you're the second person uh, who should have received Rex's memo, who has said uh, they did not. Uh, we will, I don't know exactly who this went to. I know we have a broad, uh, all subscribers come, CTE, uh, email list in Gov Delivery. Uh, I know it went there, but I don't know how it went out otherwise. I can tell you that we are going to look at that and we are going to make sure we get this communication more broadly 
uh, distributed and more directly uh, attuned to the people it should go to. Uh, so let us work with you on that. See, it, it's, it's, it's not good that the right people didn't get this. That was not our intention. Uh, that's also probably a failure of the colleges themselves to give it to the right people. Mm -hmm. So I mean, don't, I mean, I, I think you're doing the right thing, Mindy, and I think that's a good thing. But that also has to be on the responsibility of the colleges to get it to their right people as well. I think. Do your liaisons just? Are you satisfied that your liaisons distribute information to members of your college community as they get it? Well, you, you that, know, that would vary, probably. It varies. Yes. Let me rephrase that for just a moment. To my knowledge, I didn't receive it. I don't think that I received it. I, I'm sure South Plains College did, yeah. but you know how many, you know, and on behalf of the vice president and, mm -hmm. and you know how many emails they get. And so it's easy to look over. They're very busy people. It's hard to take time, send all that out. But I think uh, maybe a better, uh, more of a, a shotgun approach, you know, that might, might help with that. I think broadly inclusive is the goal. Uh, we just want to make sure that we don't miss entire groups of people in that broad inclusion. And Dwayne, I wonder why we wouldn't co copy the Weckham Committee on any mail out. Uh, that would probably be a good thing to do to make sure this committee does see those mail outs when they go. <clears throat> and we've talked about doing a follow up mail out to Rex's. Uh, recent memo, uh, just reiterating and establishing that in the future, we will send out calls for comments about a month before every Weckham quarterly meeting. And we will make certain that this committee gets that follow-up mailing to the field. Madam Chair? Yes. Yes, Mary. No, it's, it's Cindy. Oh, it's Cindy. <laughs> Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> might I make a might I make a suggestion Please. that um, the CAO meeting that's coming up here at the coordinating board at the end of October that that be on the agenda to speak with the as a reminder to the CAOs that when they receive that that they are sure to share it with their faculty. I agree. Thank you, Cindy. So noted. I agree. Thank you, Cindy. Rob, are you finished? You got some more. Oh, okay. You did, a, you did a great job, Rob. Very thorough. Very thorough. Uh, I know that, Robin, you have some answers probably to some of these things about the smaller workshops yes. that are triggered that, you know, go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you, Rob, for, for compiling this. I think it, it's very good, and I think we should probably take some action and make some recommendations based on your data and the information that you provided. For instance, um, the horology, the jewelry making. Um, we have a protocol two that says um, a model two process, a model uh, protocol, I mean, involves colleges that offer similar courses to convene instructional specialists for cooperative collaboration, networking, and production of new Wacom courses. At or, and really, that we probably should add that because, it, oh, it does say, these courses may be submitted to the Wacom Advisory Committee for review and recommendations of appropriate subcommittee. Um, but also modification, because just because um, one college submitted a lot of local needs, it doesn't necessarily mean that an existing course couldn't be tweaked with the, cor the, with the colleges that are um, offering that. Agreement. They come together, they agree on this, and then they submit the results to us for approval to be put in the Wacom. So I think notification of the two schools, Paris and Austin, that they could hold a workshop under Model 2 themselves is appropriate. And this, the, I guess this committee would tell them to do that. Um, however, a larger type program like marketing, I wouldn't advocate for a Model 2 to be handled locally by a couple of colleges when you have a large um, field like marketing. That is something that should be organized by the coordinating board to call, do a call out for instructional specialists. And just this week, um, Mindy Duane and I met about a possible process for, for that. And it looks very similar to how um, the coordinating board handles 
doing a call out for instructional specialists for both the ACGM and the programs of study. What we discussed this week, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mindy and Dwayne, but that's kind of what we, we talked about, right? Where if we have a, a, a field such as marketing or IT, the Cisco, that we need to do a call out for instructional specialists, not have colleges try to do that because you're going to have other colleges that weren't involved very upset with us as a Wickham Advisory Committee if we don't involve um, a process the way it's standardized across the state. Um, I think that brings to light, I personally don't know how many colleges do sports management. So that we're going to have to rely on information from the coordinating board to determine whether or not it needs to be a model one where we do a call out or if there are just a couple of schools that do sports management programs, if we can reach out to them and say, hey, I know there was some comments submitted that there needs to be some updates to the courses in the, in the WECM. Do you want to lead this and then make the recommendations to us? But they have to be clear that they have to involve the, the three or four or whatever colleges involved, two, three, four, in that um, so that we don't do harm to the existing institutions. Um, as far as Cisco goes and the ITCC, I think that's one, personally, I think because we know it's coming down. We know that as of October, from what I heard, Cisco will have the new curriculum out. And from what I heard yesterday, most colleges will try to implement this new this new curriculum in the spring. Well, that means we've got to get on the ball, guys, and, and do a quick call out for instructional specialists so that the minute that curriculum is released, they can get together, review the current courses, and we can make it available so that we don't have what happened the last time with Cisco, where we waited and had every institution, we told every institution, just go ahead and submit a local need, and we'll, it'll be the trigger that way. Why? That's so much work because if you think about it, that changes catalogs three times. They have a catalog with the local need number, then they have a catalog with the new Wecom number, and of course they have their old catalog with the old number in it. So this is, a, to me, this is a trigger. It, I, it came through Wecom comments, I haven't seen it, but I know it came through, that we need to act on immediately and get the, get the ball rolling. That's my two cents in this process based on the models that we currently have in the protocol and how to handle these situations. Any, is that what you wanted me to address, Joyce? <laughs> well, if I didn't, you did it anyway. <laughs> it's all right. no, no, it's I'm fine. No, I, yeah, your passion came through and, and, and rightfully so, because again, we're, we're talking about processes. And um, I think the coordinating board staff and their team and, and also this, this committee understood when we were transitioning from an external college from the coordinating board handling the Wecom process to the coordinating board handling the Wecom, Wecom process that it was <laughs> gonna be a transition. It wasn't gonna just be about meetings and that we had some action that we had to do and deliver on it. And well now, the field is calling us on that. They're calling us to be able to do, to, to react, to be able to do that. We haven't had workshops. Uh, the closest things to workshops that we have had have been the cloud computing ones. Mm -hmm. And so it is time for us to, as we say, we're representing the field, we're representing a process they expect us to be able to respond to the triggers that we have and we need to be responsive to that. So um, I'm not gonna put the coordinating board staff on, on the spot right now, but I will say that um, maybe that is something that we could look at, especially for Cisco that's coming up, something very similar to what we did with the cloud computing. And uh, I don't wanna put Sherry and Dwayne um, on notice of blast here because they reacted very quickly and swiftly, which shows that the coordinating board can do that because they do have dedicated staff and committed staff that have the ability to do that. But there are a lot of other things on the agenda 
they've they've lost a key leader in their organization. They're trying to reorganize that. They have a new commissioner coming on in the next week. And so there's a lot of other things that are happening with their agency as well. So if we are, as the Welcome Advisory Committee, are asking them to move swiftly on this, we also, uh, as leaders around this team, around this table, have to also step up to the plate and volunteer our services as well uh, because of all the things that they will need to as a team to be adjusting to. So, um, if you all would get back with us to let us know if this is something that another rabbit you can pull out of the hat to address the needs that we know that are coming because um, Cisco does have an impact on lots of programs and several colleges around the state. It is not something that is small that is, you know, just among 10 colleges, but it's a huge impact. and. So I hear my colleagues around the table silently shaking their heads that they will be um, willing to step up to the plate and also help with this, uh, help you put on this workshop. And um, I'm going to respond by uh, stating first, I see the urgency of the Cisco uh, situation. Uh, I'm going to ask Dwayne if we sent out a call for nominations, would it be possible to convene um, a workshop, say, in November? How would that timeline be? I think we'll have to look at the schedule and see how many responses we get, but theoretically it could be done okay. by November. Okay. Uh, we will initiate a call for workshop participants. We will work with uh, the committee to you know, see how many we get. Uh, we will see what we can schedule and hopefully we can do this during the fall. It will be dependent upon field response, but I suspect it will be good. Okay. Mindy, are you referencing Cisco? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, the, the Cisco situation, yes. All right, Rob, I'm checking little things off your list as we try to, as you said, um, as things are submitted, we just don't get them and they sit there. What's been actually done based on the welcome comments that are coming in? What have been, what's been done with the comments? So thank you. So um, I think Dwayne also, for lack of a better term, let a lot of you off the hook with your reports today by sh stepping up and saying he actually hadn't given you the information so you can't have <laughs> reports. Uh, Cindy, hey, Cynthia, hey, can, do you can, have anything? Can I just say very quickly, that's just typical Dwayne. He's good help, isn't he? <laughs> I do not, Madam Chair, but I do appreciate Dwayne for allowing us to defer to him. <laughs> Olga, do you have anything? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, with that, as Dwayne has stated, that he will provide you all this huge list of information um, for your committees to actually go through, and there is a special topics list and a, and a local needs list for both CE and uh, the credit CTE courses that are there. Okay. All right, staying in tune with the agenda, it is now 11.24. Um, we are going to do number seven. I think we have enough time for, we almost have almost done number seven, but yeah, I, basically, yeah. so I know that Robin may have a few more things to add. <laughs> so number seven, report from Welcome Protocol Subcommittee on Course Review Workshop Schedule. I'm going to try to tone down my passion. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we approved our protocols, first of all, um, at our last meeting, so there was no updates or changes to the protocol. Um, I have already mentioned that based on um, a, a workshop schedule that, that I did meet with Mindy and Dwayne, and um, the, the results of, of that meeting were great. I mean, they, they, they understood that there was going to be a need to have workshops. And Mindy, you were going to do a little bit of research on 
a topic that I don't know if I should even bring up, but if there's any funding or not. And um, I, I don't know if you were able to do that in, in a day, but if you haven't, that's fine. I understand completely. Uh, let me respond to that, Robin. I did check into that. Oh, uh, the agency supports attendance uh, to the uh, learning outcomes workshops that uh, go with the ACGM process. Uh, it will, in like manner, support uh, the cost of participating in the uh, Wecom workshops. Uh, these will come out of Perkins admin funds. Good. Okay. okay. So in, in what would it be the instructional specialists or what, what way would it be supporting it? We haven't worked out those details. Okay. This is new ground. Okay, uh, great. But it should work equivalently with the uh, learning outcomes work groups Thank or you. Um, ACGM. Did you, have, did you have a question or concern? Rob, you got a question? You got a question, Rob? Do you have a question? Okay. All right. You looked like you were about to yeah, speak. I did. wanted to give you the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for finding that out, Mindy. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. Um, the um, I have so many pieces of paper out here. The other thing we we looked at, um, we were talking about the triggers, and um, bottom line, uh, all of the triggers that were listed can be um, brought to light through Weckham comments or through what we talked about um, conversations, just like you had with the cloud computing professionals, uh, Madam Chair. So, and then you brought that forward to the, the coordinating board and moved forward that way. So every single one of the 10 that are on that list, even if someone has the the need a welcome comment would be appropriate um, I think as as Rob mentioned however we need to formalize the process of welcome comments in order to be able to act on those um, statements additionally when I was looking at the welcome comments that came through and then today when we got the list of the local need and special topics they also intertwine and relate directly so when you have a subcommittee looking at the special topic and local need and you have a subcommittee looking at the comments those two are going to have to come together as well because more than likely if an institution submitted a special topic or local need they most likely submitted a welcome comment also so they're going to be overlapping and it'll just help reinforce the need for that sort of a workshop um, i'd like to see this committee take a take a look at the the ones that came from the comments and and decide for moving forward whether or not we want to can uh, have a call for instructional specialists for some of the wider areas if possible and then and, and decide if we're going to approach austin and um, paris about doing the jeweler one Is that a recommendation? that's a recommendation we have a recommendation from the subcommittee uh, that we that we authorize the coordinating board to approach Austin College, Austin Community College, and Parish Community College to do a Model Two workshop, and that means in which and read the definition of a Model Two for everyone, please. The process involves colleges that offer similar courses to convene instructional specialists for cooperative collaboration, networking, and production of new Wecom courses. These courses may be submitted to the Wecom Advisory Committee for review and recommendation of appropriate subcommittee. That they are authorized, the coordinating board authorizes them to do a Model 2 workshop based on um, information that was submitted. Some of this a part of the submission we know that will be corrected through the SIP outdated one of the concerns with the outdated SIP they'll be they'll corrected through the 2020 however their proposal for rubrics and course changes and content changes uh, can then be done through a model two so with that it has been recommended that we take that may I have a I'm asking you for a motion to approve the recommendation so can I have a motion to approve the recommendation from the subcommittee? 
that we authorize the coordinating board to uh, have Model 2 workshop move forward for horology. Joyce, what about the other thing about the Cisco? Is that going to be in this oh, that's motion? A separate, oh, that's a separate, a separate motion. motion. Okay. Okay. We're, we're taking e kind of each one of these, as Rob has clearly stated, that we have not done where, what have we done with the recommendations that have come through? So I'm trying to check them off as we are going through. So hearing recommendation one about the Model 2 workshop. I'd like to make that recommendation. That move has that. been mo moved. Can I have a second of the motion? So cut. All right. So it has been, uh, the recommendation has been we have received a motion to approve the recommendation and with a second as well. So I'm going to ask for all of those who are in favor to, to approve the recommendation as stated by the subcommittee. Um, may I hear a vote of aye? Aye. Okay. Those who are imposed with the same. Okay. With that, we are. We this committee has um, approved the subcommittee's recommendation. That we had, we charged, we are authorized the coordinating board to have a model two between the two colleges that can be virtual. They don't, you don't have to bring them together, and that uh, then they will sit, submit their recommendations and comments then to you, Dwayne, to bring back to us if there are any changes or updates to the courses in the welcome. We had previously already as part of a discussion, but not as a formal motion in which the coordinating board had, is going to look at conducting a Cisco workshop in November. The, uh, yeah, that's what we just talked about, okay. And that the coordinating board will look at conducting a Cisco workshop in November based on the number of instructional specialists that would be interested in participating and as well as this advisory committee volunteering to participate as far as facilitating or any other things of being able to get the word out or whatever we need to do to help within that process and that would be a model one workshop yes it would, would you read the definition of a model one please model one process is defined by a vast number of inventory discipline related courses offered by many community and technical colleges. To assure consideration of all courses, a one to two day course review workshop is held. At the workshop, teams of instructional specialists are led by workforce education administrators who serve as mentors and facilitators. This model requires a broad representation of instructional specialists as nominated by instructional administrators. Assigned to teams of five to 12 specialists, the team members must rank high on teaching skills and knowledge of subject areas, be involved in program development and course design, example, a state authorized program of study, remain current in the discipline and work cooperatively with colleagues. Additionally, specialists are selected in consideration of obtaining equal representation from small, medium, and large colleges and from diverse regions of the state. Gender and ethnicity are important in the selection process. This type of workshop would normally be triggered by a substantive change, a substantive number of welcome comments, special topic or local need course submissions for a particular field, or response to a request from the coordinating board for necessary updates. Okay. That's what that is. All right. So I'd like to get a motion to approve the recommendation uh, based on, of course, the um, specifics as mentioned prior to uh, that we you that we accept the recommendation from the subcommittee to have a Cisco uh, triggered workshop uh, in November again based on the uh, specifics as mentioned before I make a motion uh, as stated <laughs> for the Cisco workshop to maybe take place in November Joyce I'll second okay it's been moved and second that we accept the recommendation as stated uh, by the subcommittee uh, so with that I'm going to ask a vote of aye for those who approve the recommendation aye. Aye. Okay. for same vote of no if uh, for those who oppose, I mean, or I, that 
for those who oppose. Mary, are you still there with us? Yes, I. Okay. <laughs> Okay, then motion passes. And before we move this, I'd also be able to ask for approval of a, a formal approval of another action that was previously offered by the TACTI uh, board members that we consider, uh, if at all possible, uh, looking at after we look at the uh, workshop, after we look at special topics and local needs and or other things that were on Rob's list, like the marketing program or the game or anything that is not covered by the conversion of the zip code, or any other triggers that the coordinating board staff has that uh, we look at having a workshop uh, in April at the TACTI um, conference. Uh, and I know at one point in time, we usually like to have the same zip codes that are reviewed, but uh, in this case, if we have many different zip codes that are being reviewed, then we still have an opportunity to be able to have a, a, a larger workshop where there may be marketing issues over here, there may be IT issues over here, there may be so different uh, spaces, but we have to be able to let them know because those spaces uh, will require uh, them to be able to ask the hotel for different things or speaking to the coordinating board about prices and funding. So with that, I'd like for us to approve um, that uh, we will look at the opportunity uh, to have, a, to take, we'll look at the opportunity to have a workshop in April at the TACTIC conference, if need be based on triggers that we currently have. So then we will be able to at least tell the field that we have some scheduled workshops. And so we need to know what you, so they can, we can be able to tell them what's coming up and we'll know, be able to solicit some invitations, I mean, listed some uh, applications from the field for this specialist. So with that, I'm asking for a motion to um, approve again a recommendation uh, to accept the invitation of the TACTI board to allow us to hold a workshop at their conference. So move. Okay, it's been moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we uh, accept the recommendation and uh, of that we approve the acceptance of the TACTI board to allow us to have a welcome workshop at their conference. So I'd like to have a vote on that recommendation, please. All those who are in favor, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Thank you, Mary. Any opposed, same said. All right, with that motion. Yes, Madam Chair. For the for the record, just can we also make a note? We need we will need to know in advance that we can balance rooms and all those other things. Yeah, I, that's what I said. I, I wanted to make sure that they need to know. We need to give them further enough notice of what those workshops will be and how many of those workshops will be, so that they you can balance rooms and you will be knowing that based on the incomes of the day. Okay, so with that said, then motion is, uh, recommendation is approved. And so we will put that back in the hands of the coordinating board to help us determine what workshops will be needed in, in April. Um, we know we're looking at November for the Cisco and we have approved a model two for uh, horology at, uh, between Austin and Paris. So it seems at this point in time, there's not a lot of cost to be incurred at this point, um, but we will see. Okay. All right. See, so Rob, all you have to do is bring it to us and we get the list checked off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and good work, all of you subcommittees. And I'd like to mention one thing. At one point, historically, we used to, all this committee would receive all comments from the, all welcome comments. At one point, Rob, this whole committee would see, receive the welcome comments when they were submitted. 
everybody on this committee received received those. Uh, Dwayne has told me that we have not received those in a long time. And so when you said that a new process of being able to have this have those go out to a subcommittee, um, what I'd like to ask Dwayne is to ensure that he restarts sending us this committee the welcome comments. Okay. And I think that will solve that issue of them going to a subcommittee because they used to go to all of us, everyone on this committee, so that we will be aware of what's coming. So can you do that? Okay. okay. One thought is the categories. Uh, so, so the, the so the categories, I just kind of made those up, you know. That mm -hmm. was in that spreadsheet. No, they're, they're aligned. So, so you think they're aligned, aligned well enough? Mm -hmm, they're aligned Keep. with with with. Uh, okay. we, it's th you got three of the ten that we already approved. Okay. Okay, so then Dwayne will send, start back making sure that this whole committee receives the welcome comment. Uh, that will help us and that will help us decide on what workshops will be done in April and we can decide quickly enough. We can then help the coordinating board do their work. And I have a comment that I'm going to uh, uh, proceed with Mindy comment before. Like maybe also the welcome members to receive um, notification when you are sending information to the liaison from the community college because sometimes they don't provide to us the information and then we can spread to our proper departments, curriculum office, deans, whatever they need to be informed. I, I think we can assure you that we'll do that. Uh, we can make that just a standard uh, email protocol that if we send out something to the field regarding WECOM, we will CC the WECOM committee. Yes. Thank you, Mindy. That would be great. Madam Chair? Yes. One quick thing. In addition to the welcome comments helping with the triggers for the um, April TACTI uh, workshops, um, if the subcommittees get through the special topic and local yeah. need, that will also help us decide what workshops need to be. Triggered. Yeah. Yeah, I did mention it earlier, okay. but I didn't, I didn't emphasize it enough for your passion. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You are correct. If they do go through this and look at this list, then it'll be good. Okay. So with that, I uh, it's 11:42, uh Lunch is not here yet, uh, so we will go ahead and continue. Okay. I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and go ahead and continue. So we are number eight. Okay. We don't have any other subcommittees. We've kind of done that. Check that off the list. Oh my goodness. We uh, future agenda items and resources required for next meeting. You guys, we've gotten through a whole lot. Um, even with Robin's passion and and um, and I think it's because Dwayne took a lot of you all off the hook with this. Yes. that the reason we've got through this agenda item so quickly. So if there are other things before we move to being able to look at that. And I just want to remind you, um, last meeting we kind of went around the table and everybody suggested future agenda items. So those are included on the last page of the minutes. Um, if there's anything, if you notice anything Maybe we didn't have a report about today oh, that yeah. you might like for the next yep, meeting. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Legislative processes, licensure and certifications. So do you have anything, any updates on legislative matters? Dwayne, Mindy, Sherry's gosh. Any oh, updates? Um, there was a question, of, actually rather, rather heated discussion last meeting about yep. the TDLR mm -hmm. regulations, mm -hmm. and I was tasked with looking up uh, any additional uh, programs that might be affected. Mm -hmm. I have that list on my computer somewhere. I'll have to look for it. So might want to defer that for a few minutes. Okay, we can defer that for a few minutes till you get to your computer. Do you know what you're okay. saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mindy. 
I have no updates. Okay. Any updates on Perkins? I certainly do. All right. Oh. <laughs> um, the uh, Perkins uh, stakeholder meetings are proceeding. Uh, some of you have hosted, some of you have attended. Uh, these have been a great success. Uh, our, our event organizer, Sherry, has uh, worked with eight institutions to put these together. And uh, they, they, we are, have just finished the fifth of eight. Wow. Uh, so this, this is, uh, this is ongoing, but it, 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 is, it is a good source of consultation. Uh, we had a really good regional stakeholder meeting at uh, South Plain, I'm sorry, at uh, Clarendon. We had uh, quite a significant turnout for students at both Clarendon and um, at Tarrant. Uh, we, so I will, you know, I, at, well, and at uh, Angelina, where even before semester started, they got a good group of students out. Uh, we have uh, convened with uh, TEA and with other parties uh, on how we will proceed on uh, drafting of the state plan. It will go before TEA, which will be the submitter. It will go before TEA, TEA's board in November as an outline, the state plan draft. It will be in full draft form before the TEA board in January. It will uh, be reviewed and approved in April and will also be submitted during the month of April to Department of Education. Oh. So that's our, that's our uh, stage right now. Uh, we have ongoing uh, the work of development of four model comprehensive local needs assessments uh, and uh, are in the works with plans to, as we've said many times, uh, develop resources for institutions uh, for their work on their local CLNAs, uh, that, that much of that I think will be uh, going to uh, the TACTI Perkins page where we can get it out quickly to the field. So much is happening, stand by, be on notice. Uh, I believe the, and let me just say this, I believe the January, uh, version, the draft version of the state plan is the one that will be posted for public comment. Now, don't hold me to that. I, I heard this and took notes at a meeting last week and, and haven't reviewed my notes. Uh, so you'll be wanting to watch for a state plan publicly posted for public comment on the TEA website. And we'll try to get you update on that posting date when, when we can confirm it. So Mindy, Mindy, where are your next three um, stakeholder meetings going to be held? Midland College, San Jacinto College, Tyler Junior College. All right. Anyone else have questions of Mindy on Perkins, re re related to Perkins? Okay. Any other updates? Um, uh, that anyone else knows around the table about licensure and certification changes other than Cisco? The Barbara? The, the, the Barbara that uh, the one who Yeah. Oh, yeah, TDA. Yeah. Okay. Rob? Yeah, I'm curious if there's any. TDLR status on cosmetology, you know, we all know that's coming. That was a big I think he's item pull, that was discussed. Yeah, he's going to pull, pull those up for us. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Anyone else know any other changes on licensure and certification that we may not be aware of that your faculty and or industry partners have mentioned? Okay. Okay. So with that, uh, do we have a time schedule for the next meeting? A oh, day? That uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just in the minutes. Okay. 
future meetings scheduled to September 27th, January 30th, April 30th, and July 30th. One of the things we probably su should suggest, I mean, should um, think about, and, uh, and you all definitely can, can follow up with me later, but we should think about is how we are going to um, determine which workshops we want to be held in April. And Tacti, I'm going to ask you, Tacti board members, if you all would give us a deadline. This committee works very well with deadlines. So if you all would give us a deadline when you need to know uh, whether that is going to be a definite, uh, whether we are going to have a, we are definitely going to have a workshop, if you would give us some, uh, a deadline that you need to know that. So, because we, we work better with deadlines. Okay. All right. Well, looks like, uh, Dwayne, how close are you? He's still looking? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's still As Dwayne looks, let me let you know that lunch is here. Mm -hmm. uh, we might want to break for lunch and give Dwayne that, time to. That's what I was going to say. We're going to break for lunch since Dwayne hasn't. Yeah, finally, we'll break for lunch, and then we'll reconvene for the report out from the way. So at this point in time, those of you who are looking, uh, there will be no broadcasting during lunch. So we're going to break for lunch for about 30 minutes. That should get it? Yes. So we're going to break for lunch uh, for about 30 minutes. It's now 11.52. Okay.
it is now 12 30 and uh we are now back from lunch a little bit late we apologize for those who've joined us back on the line mary are you still there okay Sam, i'm here thank you thank you mary i uh, appreciate you okay we were going to get an update from Dwayne, but while we're waiting on an update from Dwayne, I've I've been asked to have a clarification based on the last uh, minutes that we had. If you would look at your minutes on page three, <clears throat> so that we can clarify who's on the subcommittees, the membership on the subcommittees. We do know if you would leave, look at the bottom paragraph. We do know that Vernon Hawkins subcommittee consists of the um, taste representatives and the regional representatives of taste that will be reviewing the non-credit special topic and local, uh, local need courses. Then we had the uh, course review subcommittee for professional development courses. Oh, that was part of that. Then we got Cindy Griffith has agreed to chair the course revision and archival subcommittee. Who's on that with Cindy Griffith? I volunteer. Cynthia Griffith. I volunteered to be on it with okay. her. Okay. We got, all right. Yeah, and I'll help Olga's, I'll okay. Help with Olga's committee. Okay. So we got Olga on the credit special topics and local. So we got James, who's going to be on Olga's committee. And we got Cindy that's going to be on Cynthia's committee. Anyone else want to be a part of these subcommittees? Joyce, I'd like to help with the archive. Okay. Subcommittee. And Jennifer is going to be on your committee as well. So for clarification, I know TACTI voted me in as, a, as their WICM representative. Does that make me ex officio or does that make me a committee member? Because I, I would like to help, but I don't know if I'm supposed to if I'm ex officio. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, if you're on this committee, you got taken up a chair, you can help. Okay, so that's probably where you want me. <laughs> you, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I'm going to say that uh, ex officio's role is uh, one of participation. Uh, you are also representing an external entity, which, you know, brings the, you know, denotion, denotation of ex officio. But I'm going to tell you, I don't think we could have gotten through cloud computing yesterday without the IT POS committee's ex officio member, Robin Garrett. Uh, you just participate away, my dear. <laughs> Joyce, film Madam me wherever Chair. you need. Have yeah. a gap. Okay, you want her? Okay, Leslie will be on. Yeah. I just like the credit. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so I think we have it. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, yes, Mary. Mary. I'd also like to participate in the special topics and local needs committee, please. Okay, so that's Olga. Olga, you have Mary, you have Leslie, you have James. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. And Cynthia, you have Cindy, and you have Jennifer. And Rob, you are through with yours because you did yours for the summer. Unless you still want to just hang in there. And that was a question. I didn't know if the comments were, were going to come out again. Oh, I think you are. Though. Yes, right. You are the welcome comments person. No, you still have your subcommittee. You and Robin. <laughs> you and Robin working on the welcomes comment. So we got it. I think we all got it now. We got three uh, subcommittees that are doing, that are involved in reviewing field course stuff. Yeah. No, he's not. No, Robin, he's not. He's no, not. He's not. It's just you and you and Rob. There's somebody else. You no. want some. I'm, I'm on there. No, I'm on there. Else I'm on there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we got all of our committee set. Okay. Uh, Dwayne, you're going to up you. Thank you for the list, but now you can kind of update us because Mary's on the line. And so I'm sure Mary uh, Dwayne will em will email you this information. Right, and again, this is uh, information I got from the um, TDLR website. Uh, first, it's just a list of the programs. I was you know, asked to check what other programs might be affected by any any kind of legislation. And looking over this list, um, I didn't really see any that <clears throat> we have associate degree level programs in. Again, except cosmetology. Uh, you have air conditioning. 
air conditioning and heating, HVAC. They, they okay. And so I guess the next step is to see what effect that legislation has on those programs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you got it right there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the electrician, too? Yeah, electrician right. as well. Speech pathology, probably in financial. So, yeah, so if you would, Dwayne, and let us know, can we get a, a deadline by which you may have this information to us? I'll, I'll email you. I, I, an update within the week. Oh, okay. Within the week. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Just so I'm uh, clear, because I was reading and not listening, uh, you want an update on changes for the specific programs affected? Yeah, we wanted to know the impact mm -hmm. of that the legislation would have on programs. What would it means that? Would it mean us having to change? Courses, change hours, change requirements. What would, what is the impact on our programs and or courses within those programs? Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. And the next, uh, also from their website, was a list of um, legislative changes made by the 86 <laughs> Texas legislature. Le legislature. Okay. And again, I haven't looked at those fully, but I'll <clears throat> kind of double check to make sure whether or not they affect any of the program programs. Okay. Any questions from anyone on the committee? And Mary? No, yeah, thank you. Anyone? Anything? Bob, anything that you see? I know you were really concerned about it. Nothing. Okay, with that said, uh, we'll just get updates from committee members. We'll start, start with you. Jennifer, any updates? No, ma'am. Okay, Rob. Rob, any updates? No, but I'd like to say that, you know, I'm not concerned. I, I'm, I think everything's going fine. I, I understand quality takes time, so so I'm, I'm, I'm good with everything, where everything's going. Okay. Phil None. Leslie. Come in. Already addressed. Okay. Oh. No. Do I? Nothing so far. Nothing so far. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've expressed that. Thank you. Uh, no, not at this time. Mindy. Um, no update. I want to thank the committee for bearing with us during this time. Um, we have a time of loss. We have a time of transition. Uh, we look forward to continued and increasing uh, cooperation with and support of this committee. Okay. Well, with that said, then we are joined at... Oh, let's see. Okay. Can I get a motion to, to uh, adjoin the meeting? I'll make a motion. Okay, it's been moved. I'll second. Second. <laughs> that we adjourn the meeting at 1239. Thank you all so much. Safe travels. Oh, so fast. These ones are fast enough. Thank you. Yeah. Right? It's okay. Yeah. Let it ride. I if know. Dwayne had his stuff ready, we would have been out here at 1130. <laughs> no, you guys, you're really fast. Yeah, I know. <laughs>